Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a really cute folk art quilt pattern. Now there's actually two of them. One's called Sunbonnet Sue, as you can see over my shoulder on that toaster cover, and the other one is Overall Bill. So let's kind of take a look at the two that I've got here. Now these are so much fun to make. They're absolutely adorable. And you can get all kinds of free patterns on the internet. And you'll see these two, Sue and Bill, doing different activities. And they're, so they're a lot of fun. You have a lot of options for these. Now these two are very classic Sunbonnet Sue quilt blocks. So let me go over how you can get your own patterns for free. Okay, what you're going to do is log on to the internet. Okay, once you get on the internet, you're going to scroll, you're going to go to the little search block and you're going to enter either Sunbonnet Sue Quilt Block and or you want to do Overall Bill Quilt Block. Then you're going to scroll down uh, past the first few websites that show up and look for something that says images of Sunbonnet Sue or if you're looking for Bill it'll say images of overall Bill and once you click on that dozens of images of Sue and Bill and different craft projects that you can use them on. So let me show you some of the ones that I found, okay? Here is Sunbonnet Sue holding a little doll of Sunbonnet Sue. That's, that one was really cute. And then if you like to do embroidery, you can get images of Sunbonnet Sue in embroidery patterns. This one is absolutely adorable. She's all in red and holding a little heart. Just a really cute pattern. And then this one is also very elegant little pattern. She's holding a balloon. These are so easy to do. And in a second, I'm gonna show you how to do them. Now let's look at what you can find on Bill. Okay, like I said, you're gonna see them doing all kinds of activities. Bill has just gone fishing and he's on his way home. Here is a very classic overall Bill pattern. This is so, so cute. And then here's another one of Bill who's been going fishing. Now sometimes when you click on the images, they come out a little small. So when you decide to print one out, and if it's little like this, you can enlarge it. Select, so select your enlargement button on your printer and increase the size. Now here is an idea for a quilt that you can make. And each one of these overall bill patterns, you can use up different scraps. So each one was a little different as far as fabric selection. Now this one is really great. And it, what it has, it, it already has the little pieces separated for you so that all you need to do is cut out your fabrics for it. And up here, this little tiny picture is an image of how the layout is. Now, you sh probably should enlarge this one because this one's pretty small. So now let me show you the one I'm using, okay? I liked this one a lot. This is the one where he's probably already gone fishing. Now the part of this that I'm not going to do in this particular demonstration is the pole and the fish. But if you want to do the pole, you could do a little satin stitch out here and then a little straight stitch going down there to the fish if you wanted to do this one. Okay, so let me show you what I did with this. You want to cut out the pieces. All right. Now, on this particular pattern that I'm using, I actually had to make two copies of this because I needed to cut out the arm and the hand separately. 
and then here's the overall the pants down here the trousers so you can see why I had to make two copies to get that out so once you've cut out all of your pieces then you want to transfer it to cardstock because it's easier to trace around this especially if you're going to do multiple uh, squares with overall bill or sue in it so just use thin cardboard you can either buy it in stores or just scrounge up some old cardboard from around your house okay now once you've got all of that done then get your two-sided iron-on fusible web okay now what it has is on the back is this plain paper nothing is on it but on the front you'll see little blue lines or you might have some that have yellow lines now these comes in sheets of 9 by 12 I think there's about five in a package you can get them at fabric stores craft stores and you can even purchase it online so once you've got your templates made then you want to lay the templates on the grid line side of your fusible web and then just lay it down and go ahead and trace around it so do that with all of your pieces after you've got them done you're gonna cut them out of your sheet but when you're cutting them out you want to leave a little bit of space here don't cut on the lines just yet okay now you're going to remove the paper off of the back and let me look for my glasses here because I can't see very well there we go you're gonna remove this paper off so just lift up the paper on the back now if you're having a hard time getting this paper off just take a straight pin and score it you're tearing the paper then bend it until an edge pops up so as you're lifting this off make sure that the glue is still on the grid line side don't lift off the glue just yet so remove all of this then once you've got that removed place it on the back side of your fabric on the back side otherwise it's not going to come out right okay so once you've got it on there finger press it down real good okay and then use small scissors you're going to get better results cutting these out now you're going to cut right on the drawn lines okay so do this with all of your pieces of fabric all your little applique pieces now when you're done with your templates before I go on put them in little bags like this okay because it's easy to lose these little pieces in this way you can use them on another project the same pattern so once you're done with your templates store them okay so now you've got all of your pieces cut out okay so here's mine now I'm gonna take the hand and arm away for a second okay setting it right there for now now you want to just lay these down and arrange them I've still got the paper on the back okay so lay them down and see how you want them to be arranged get them all kind of where you want them to be then start up here now you're gonna remove the paper so pull this paper off now if you're having a hard time getting the paper to come off don't forget to score it tear the paper a little bit now you want to be real careful that you don't lift the oh, let me get it here there we go whoops I tore it there we go you want to make sure you don't lift the glue off okay you want the glue onto the fabric then remove the paper then set it back down where you wanted it okay now don't finger press it just yet just sort of tap it just so it doesn't fly away somewhere then take off the next piece remove the paper on the back place it down don't finger press yet 
and then do this one and then this one. Now, if it looks crooked and you don't like the way it is, you can still lift it up and shift it around. Once you've got it the way you like it, then finger press this all down. Then take the arm, place it where you'd like it to go, and then the hand, okay? Finger press it all down. Then once you've got all that done, then you're going to go to your ironing board and you're use, going to use a damp cloth. And I usually just take a spray bottle and I just spray it down. Okay, so use a little spray bottle. It's real convenient. Then read the instructions on your package for how long to leave your iron on it. So it's probably going to say 12 to 15 seconds. So hot iron with steam, hold it there for that number of seconds and then lift it off. Now if you find that it didn't stick very well, then just get your cloth damp again and then do the ironing process again. Okay, now we're going to go over some of the stitches so we can see what options you have for that. Now on Bill, I've used the same color of thread as the fabric. Now you don't have to do that. You can pick one color and use it on all of your pieces. So you can really do whatever you want. Remember, in the quilting world, there are no rules. There's just merely suggestions. So have fun with it and experiment. Now, this is a very basic applique stitch that I've got on here. You'll see it's, it's quite common. Now you might want to use this stitch. So look at your machine. Then take some scrap fabrics and do some of the stitches to see how it looks and to see how wide they are because on some things you may not want them very wide. So I'm going to show you an example of that. Look at Sue's hat band. I started putting the same stitch that was over here on the hat band and I soon realized that it was going to cover the entire hat band by the time I got around it. So I switched to a small satin stitch so that the hat band would show. That's why it's so important to practice your stitches on the side. Okay, well, I hope you try to do Sunbonnet Sue, I think you're good, or Overall Bill. Now, if you want to learn more about machine applique, there are videos I have, I go into detailed information on the stitches. I also show you how to create your own patterns. So click on the link at the end of the video. It'll be in the upper right hand corner and it'll take you through a playlist to explain or to demonstrate all of these different applique patterns. And right there is Sunbonnet Sue on that toaster cover so you can get an idea of what it would look like on another project. Now to keep informed on all my future videos, click on subscribe. There's one down there in the lower right hand corner it's red it says subscribe click on that one or there's a round picture of my face in the upper left hand corner you can click on that too once you do that YouTube's going to prompt you for your email address enter that information and the next time I have a new video YouTube sends you a brief email with a big uh, button in the center that you click on and it takes you directly to my latest video. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room and I'll see you next time and don't forget happy sewing.